2.6% in the past fiscal year. Egypt targets achieving 2.8% growth rate in the current fiscal year and 5.4% in the coming one. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're now delighted to be joined over the telephone by Dr. Mona Larishi, Women Empowerment Advocate. Dr. Mona, very good afternoon to you, ma'am. Good afternoon. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much for joining us, doctor. Now, let's talk a bit about uh, good economic indicators. How are these uh, indicators of the Egyptian economy reflected uh, and felt really on the low-income uh, earners or low-income brackets? Uh, we see now that we are really uh, bringing in all the uh, categories of uh, income to, uh, in, in focus. Mm -hmm. So more people are benefiting from the uh, social activities, mm -hmm. um, be that the, the Capital and Karama program, for example, mm -hmm. uh, or other, um, let me say, uh, uh, social activities such as uh, empowerment mm -hmm. and uh, the focus as well uh, of bringing the, the culture mm -hmm. to everybody. So what we have seen uh, last week uh, on TV, uh, which was part of, uh, uh, the, I would say, a great victory of Egypt, uh, brings in all the calibers of the society mm -hmm. uh, to see how the country is, uh, you know, empowering them on all dimensions. Yes, indeed. Now, Doctor, uh, the role that the presidential initiatives has played in this regard uh, is undeniable. We're talking about things like Solidarity, Dignity, the Decent Life Initiative, and others have um, really played a role in raising the living standards uh, of these classes. Would you agree? I agree because the quality of life is not just about uh, food and having income, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it, it's a really round the 360 degree balance. Uh, the more you bring to people uh, the quality of life, which is, as I mentioned here, culture, uh, enablement, education, health, of course, the insurance, health insurance. Yes. Of course, people have to first uh, be able to uh, satisfy their basic needs, mm. but then immediately you can see the projects such as the, uh, the nine uh, corners where people can walk. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and enjoy an afternoon with the beautiful weather of Cairo, for example. Mm -hmm. And this is not happening only in Cairo, but across uh, the country. Yes. So this is really elevating uh, the, the level of the, uh, let me say, enjoyment and quality of life yes. for the normal citizens across Cairo and Egypt as well. Absolutely. Now, Doctor, let's talk a bit about the role of, um, you know, non-governmental organizations and the private sector. Uh, how, do, how does the state seek their assistance or their cooperation uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, developing these programs to cater uh, for these specific uh, sectors in society? There, there was uh, this big project uh, that started uh, directly after the revolution mm. about understanding where are the gaps right. uh, across the country. And then uh, by uh, a specific strategy, we can uh, highlight which area, mm. specific one, uh, do we need to have the NGO and public sector participate in together. Yes. So the idea would be like each, uh, as we say, ministry, would be having uh, some sort of uh, affiliation or collaboration with uh, uh, one, one large public sector, uh, let me say, company, and then they deliver projects with different NGOs on that sector. Mm -hmm. So slowly, slowly, we can cover all the gaps and uh, bring really prosperity across the country. Yes, absolutely. Doctor, um, could you give us a, some sort of round figure as to um, how many families have been really assisted or helped so far uh, because of such initiatives? I would say if I touched every single person, I, I cannot really claim a specific figure. I would be to rely on statistics mm. that are, uh, you know, announced and published by the, uh, by the mainstream rather than I would put my, I figure myself. But from my own point of view, mm. it, it's not just the direct, uh, you know, uh, giving and taking or products like the solidarity Yes. That is affecting the, uh, the citizen. Mm. It is every single small thing that is happening today in, in, uh, uh, in the ecosystem. Mm. So the culture, the, as I mentioned, how you people are enjoying the, the life. Mm. All those uh, new roads, the transportation is, is easier. Yes. So the, the citizen can see 
that they are taking care of six, 360 degrees, as I mentioned. It's very, very important. Yes. Small things that bring us together uh, his satisfaction. Yes, or her satisfaction. Yes, indeed, mm -hmm. Doctor. And within these citizens, there are other subgroups that are further uh, at a disadvantage. We're speaking about women, for yeah. example. Um, how does this fit into the issue of women empowerment? How are they prioritized uh, when it comes to such initiatives, Doctor? But this is an excellent question. Thank you for that. Uh, I can see now that the economy is very much focused on having uh, women play. Uh, more uh, a bigger role in it. For example, the uh, the women are on board. So more women ha are mandated now to join the board, which is bringing a better decision-making process. For example, mm -hmm. so the dimension of uh, women enablement is not just uh, uh, only in one sector or another, mm -hmm. but it has to happen all across. Right. And meanwhile, many NGOs now are focusing on the enablement and increasing uh, how the women is, are, are able to really provide their character mm. uh, in, in a way that they can have their voice heard. Mm -hmm. And more and more in the media, we can see that happen, yes. uh, the respect and uh, how the woman sees herself, perceives herself, and the society perceives the women are changing. It will take time, of course, yes. this is a culture, mm -hmm. but it is happening as we speak. Yes. Doctor, do you see uh, enough being done? You speak a lot about culture, uh, so obviously there is a long uh, room, uh, way to go when it comes to education, to educating people, to shifting that cultural uh, dialogue that we, uh, as women, for example, hope to shift. How far have we come in that regard, Doctor? Okay, so I would say that you, the media, has a very important role to play there. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the more we we get to see, uh, let me say, uh, uh, or the soap operas, for example. Mm. Three, having uh, uh, the, the house, you know, the family, the Egyptian family, mm -hmm. travel the street, uh, the girls within the, uh, the house, like yes. example. Nobody tells the, uh, the girls, please bring a glass of water to your brother. So this, those are small nuances uh, that are with, within the context of women in neighborhood, they really big big uh, impact. Yes. And of course this would be, let me say, multiplied and multiplied further in the media, social media as well and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. Right. One final question, Doctor, also the youth. Uh, another maybe, um, um, you know, not uh, catered for previously, but now uh, the youth are taking center stage in many of the presidential initiatives. How important is that specifically because we as a population are actually quite a young one? Absolutely, uh, 60 percent yes. and more, mm. and and that is why uh, I would, I always say body, mind, heart, and soul. Mm. So as long as we are providing engagement across all dimensions for our youth population, which is uh, the, the the present and the future, mm. uh, I think this would be a, a, a prosperous for each more and more. And by that I mean sports, I mean uh, that seeing such cultural events happen. Uh, opening, um, uh, you know, those uh, uh, like opera houses across uh, the country and so on. Mm -hmm. This is really uh, the most important part. Uh, and then again, having uh, their mind taken care of and finally uh, their souls. Mm -hmm. So um, the opening up discussions between religions and making sure that the, uh, this open discussion brings all opinions together mm -hmm. so they can express themselves and feel heard. So yes. contribution is by doing things themselves and their voices are heard as well. Absolutely, you're right. I'd like to thank you very, very much, uh, Dr. Muna Larishi, Women Empowerment Advocate. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your time and for your insight on today's edition of Cairo Local Time. Very short break and we'll be right back to continue, so do stay tuned.
Right, and uh, to continue with our news, in statements uh, released, the executive director of the authority of the NEMEC said that the museum's restoration team has unpacked the royal mummies, sifted them from their nitrogen capsules ahead of displaying them at the museum as per the state-of-the-art scientific techniques that have been used. Uh, before entering the hall of the royal 